The history of math is our intellectual foundation to understanding science. Science. Beautiful, awesome, wonderful science. It's the creative foundation to our ineffable future. I'm Gabrielle Burchak, and this is my podcast, Math, Science, History. Gender disparity is evident in all areas of employment and in academia, specifically in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It is blatantly obvious. The ratio of men to women, specifically in physics, engineering, and computer science, remains at four men for every woman. And we are now in the 21st century where we have made, quote, progress. Even though the 18th through the 20th centuries show progress, the improvement made was exceptionally slow. Thus, when Sofia Kovalevskaya obtained the position of full professor at Stockholm University, it was an exceptional accomplishment on behalf of women. She was the first woman in Europe to hold this position in modern times. This same year, she also became a corresponding member of the Russian Academy of Sciences. And rightly so, because Sofia was born and raised in Russia. Yet, Russia's academia never offered her a full professorship despite all of her accomplishments. Sofia Kovalevskaya was an extraordinary woman with multiple talents. She not only enjoyed mathematics, but she also enjoyed writing and literature. She was born in Moscow on January 15, 1850. She had an older sister and a younger brother. Her father, Lieutenant General Vasily Vasilyevich Korvin Krukovsky, was an artillery general for the Imperial Russian Army. He was also the descendant of a Hungarian royal family. Her mother was the daughter of General Theodor Friedrich von Schubert, an honorary member of the Russian Academy of the Sciences and director of the Kunstkamera Museum. Additionally, Kovalevskaya's great-grandfather was the prominent astronomer Friedrich Theodor Schubert. When she was eight years old, her father retired and moved the family to an estate in Polabino. In her memoir titled Her Recollections of Childhood, Kovalevskaya writes that when they moved into the castle, they renovated the rooms. However, there was not enough wallpaper for all the rooms. As a result, Kovalevskaya's room was only partially covered with wallpaper. The other walls were covered with lithographed lecture notes that her father wrote while attending a calculus class by the prominent Russian mathematician Mikhail Vasilyevich Ostrogradsky. In her memoir, Kovalevskaya writes, quote, These sheets, spotted over with strange, incomprehensible formulas, soon attracted my attention. I passed whole hours before that mysterious wall, trying to decipher even a single phrase, and to discover the order in which the sheets ought to follow each other. So early on, Kovalevskaya found herself fascinated and interested in calculus. This became evident when she was 15 years old and took her first differential calculus class and greatly impressed her teachers with her knowledge of these challenging topics. This became evident when she was 15 years old and took her first differential calculus class and greatly impressed her teachers with her knowledge of these challenging topics. And even though her parents were smart, Kovalevskaya was predominantly raised and educated by the servants. Unfortunately for Kovalevskaya, her governess was psychologically abusive. If Sofia misbehaved, the governess would write out the details of her behavior and then pin it to her back, which she had to wear to dinner in front of the other family members. Additionally, this governess also separated her from her sister, Anne, whom Kovalevskaya absolutely adored. So growing up was emotionally challenging for Kovalevskaya. Regardless, her parents ensured that she received an education from some of the best tutors and teachers. As a result, she had been trained in mathematics by Josef Malevich, Alexander Strano Lyubsky, and physicist Nikolai Tirtov, who called her the new Pascal. By the time Kovalevskaya was ready to attend the university, she was limited in obtaining a higher education because women were not permitted to obtain college degrees in Russia at this time. Regardless, Kovalevskaya and her sister were determined to receive higher education. And so, like many of her friends, they found a workaround. They could obtain a college degree if they were to study in another country. However, unmarried women were not allowed to travel by themselves. And so... Kovalevskaya and her sister Anne made arrangements to get married. 
Also during this time, Anne was introduced to a new progressive movement called the Russian Nihilist Movement. This was the 1860s, and the term Nihilist was a reference to the hero figure in the book Fathers and Children by Ivan Turgenev. This hero figure and the Russian Nihilists believed that science was a valid tool for helping people live a healthier and more vital life. Much like the 17th and 18th centuries Enlightenment era, they knew that science invalidated religion and superstition and that science and its discoveries meant progress for society. In 1868, Kovalevskaya entered into a contract with Vladimir Kovalevsky that stated that they were married. Vladimir was an intelligent, young paleontology student, a book publisher, and one of the first to translate and publish in Russia the works of Charles Darwin. After their marriage, they traveled from Russia to Vienna. While in Vienna, she studied physics and attended lectures at the university. However, their stay was short and they moved to Germany. In Germany, as a woman, she was not allowed to attend classes at the university. However, again, she found a workaround and obtained permission to audit the classes with the professors at the University of Heidelberg. She studied physics and mathematics at the university while her husband earned his doctorate in paleontology. They traveled to London for a brief stay. They engaged in intellectual and social circles where she would meet other brilliant individuals and writers, including Thomas Huxley, Charles Darwin, Herbert Spencer, and George Eliot. In 1870, they moved to Berlin. Kovalevskaya was hoping to attend the lectures of Karl Weierstrauss. However, unfortunately, they would not allow her to attend the classes or even audit them in Berlin. And so, Kovalevskaya approached Weierstrass with glowing recommendations from her previous professors. Unfortunately, he had to follow the university's order and told her that she could not attend his lectures. And so, he sent her away with a set of mathematical problems. He was, quote, convinced she would not succeed and gave the matter no further thought. But she returned a week later with all of the solutions that, according to Weierstrass, were, quote, eminently clear and original. Weierstrass was so impressed that he decided to provide her with private lessons using the same lecture notes that he used at the university. I want to take a short break, and I want to send a big thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this podcast. If you could please give a listen to a word from today's math science history sponsor, who helps to keep this podcast up and running. Battling with mental and emotional challenges is not an anomaly. Sometimes we all need help, and I love how in these recent years the search for mental wellness has been destigmatized. And no doubt these last two years have been hard and have left us holding in a lot of grief, wondering what exactly is interfering with our happiness. BetterHelp, that's better, H-E-L-P, is here to help you. BetterHelp is a wonderful online international platform that provides counseling for depression, stress, anxiety, and grief grief, to name a few. Keep in mind, this is not a crisis line and it's not self-help. BetterHelp is professional counseling through an online safe, secure, and confidential platform. When you sign up, you can start communicating with a counselor within 48 hours. And because it's online, you don't have to wait in a waiting room. You can message your counselor at any time and you can schedule weekly and video phone sessions. Additionally, their counselors are affordable. They offer financial aid and it's free to switch counselors if you need to. Who wouldn't want to start living a happier life today? As my listener, you will get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash listener. A year into her studies with Weierstrass, she and Vladimir went to Paris to find her sister, whom she believed was missing. When they arrived, she discovered that her sister and her brother-in-law, Victor Jacklard, had been arrested because of their extreme socialist views and efforts to implement rights for the workers. Her sister escaped to London, but her brother-in-law had been sentenced to execution. Kovalevskaya and her sister reached out to their father, who had political sway in Paris as Russia's lieutenant general. With his help, they were able to save Jacklard. Kovalevskaya went back to Berlin and continued to study from Weierstrass for three more years. Her brilliance was astounding. She presented three papers to the University of Göttingen as her doctoral dissertation. These papers covered topics on partial differential equations, elliptic integrals, and the dynamics of the rings of Saturn. Thus, in 1874, she earned her doctorate in absentia summa cum laude. 
This was an exceptional accomplishment because she was the first woman to earn a doctorate in mathematics in modern Europe. Her work with partial differential equations was foundational to her Cauchy initial value problem analysis. Here's the backstory. In 1842, Cauchy presented a special case of the initial value problem. However, it wasn't completely solved until 1875 when Kovalevskaya provided the complete solution and formulated the most general proof. In 1874, Kovalevskaya and her husband moved back to Russia. However, because Vladimir was actively involved in an unfavorable political movement, he could not secure a job. Additionally, Kovalevskaya could not secure a job because, well, she was a woman. As a result, they struggled financially. Around this time, her father died, which possibly drew them closer, and as a result, she became pregnant. Sophia had a daughter that she named Sophia, and she nicknamed her Fufa. Unfortunately, Vladimir was temperamental and struggled with anger. This was probably heightened because the government was prosecuting him for fraudulent activities with a stock exchange. Kovalevskaya decided to put her daughter under the care of friends and family and go back to work as a mathematician and professor, and so she left Vladimir. Kovalevskaya moved back to Sweden, where she obtained a position at Stockholm University. That same year, in 1883, Vladimir fell into a deep depression and, sadly, committed suicide. His suicide left Kovalevskaya filled with grief and devastation. After several inconsolable days, she deeply immersed herself in mathematics to regain her composure. In 1884, Kovalevskaya obtained the position of assistant professor at Stockholm University as well as editor of the journal Acta Mathematica. By 1888, the French Academy of Science awarded her the Prix Bourdon Prize for her thesis titled Faces on a Particular Case of the Problem of the Rotation of a Heavy Body Around a Fixed Point Where the Integration is Carried Out Using the Ultra-Elliptical Functions of Time. Yes. That's the title. And it's a very long title for a thesis on rotational bodies and elliptical functions that showed how rigid body motion is completely integrable. This award, the Prix Bourdon, was well-deserved because this was the discovery of what is now called the Kovalevskaya top. Though it is called a top, it's not a toy. Instead, it is a question that asks the mathematician or scientist to perfect a theory that addresses the movement of a solid body around an immovable point. One of the best analogies I heard is to watch a figure skater spin with their arms out, and then when they pull their arms in, they spin faster. The work behind the Kovalevskaya top comes from 100 years earlier when Leonard Euler and then Joseph Lagrange analyzed the movement of a spinning top. Euler analyzed tops and referred specifically to the center of gravity as the fixed point. Lagrange also analyzed tops. However, his fixed point was where the top touched the ground. But when Kovalevskaya analyzed the top, she found that on a spinning top that looks at a solid body around an immovable point, there are three instances of inertia. These three instances are referenced as three coordinate axes that are centered at one point on the top. Two of the three instances are the same value, and the third instance is half that value. And so we are back to where I started this podcast. In 1889, Kovalevskaya was appointed full professor at Stockholm University. However, this was not her only extensive accomplishment. She also wrote a memoir, two plays, and an autobiographical novel. Sadly, shortly after she returned from a vacation in Nice, France, she died from an epidemic flu complicated by pneumonia. She was only 41 years old. Kovalevskaya left a legacy and inspiration for many women to pursue mathematics. Her legacy includes events hosted by the Association for Women in Mathematics, of which I'm a member. Additionally, there are funds and scholarships in her name and a lunar crater in her honor. She was a brilliant woman who wholeheartedly pursued the discovery of mathematics. Because of Kovalevskaya, Many women worldwide are inspired by her story and continue to walk the path of mathematics, which becomes well-tread as more women pursue this phenomenal subject. 
With this ongoing progress of more women entering into science, technology, engineering, and math, we can only hope to reduce the ratio of men to women in academia. And not just women, but also women of color, members of the LGBTQ community, and all those who are marginalized. Brilliance comes in all shapes, sizes, constructs, and genders. And the more that the world of STEM embraces our differences, the more discoveries we can obtain. But hope is just a thought. We can do more than hope. We can be part of that inspiration. We can encourage and inspire marginalized individuals to pursue these wonderful subjects. And I just know that if you are a woman, a woman of color, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, or disabled, and you work in STEM, I know that you are inspiring someone at this very moment. And for all of my listeners in STEM, including those who do not fit into the marginalized groups, but do all you can to diminish the discrimination, thank you for helping to reduce the ratio. Until next time, carpe diem. If you would like to support Math Science History, the podcast, and the YouTube channel, please visit patreon.com slash mathsciencehistory. Become a patron and be part of the Math Science History community. I have multiple tiers with multiple rewards for my patrons. By supporting Math Science History, you make this podcast and the show possible. If you would like more information about math science history, you can also visit mathsciencehistory.com. Also, you can always find me on your preferred social media platform, including Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Just search for Gabrielle Burchak. Until next time, carpe diem.